We frequently draw molecules as flat two-dimensional structures on a piece of paper. However, they exist as three-dimensional structures. And because of this, there is a shape that they have. That shape is determined by something called Vesper theory. Vesper theory stands for valence cell, electron, pair, repulsion. What this means is that the electrons, because they're negatively charged, are going to repel each other and push themselves as far apart as possible in the structure. So the bonds that form and the lone pair electrons are going to be as far apart from each other as possible. In order to determine the shape of our molecules, we are going to have to count bonding groups. And a bonding group is any single, double, or triple bond. It counts as one, elect as one bonding group. And lone pairs. And each lone pair counts as one lone pair. Each pair of electrons counts as one lone pair. Using the numbers of bonding groups and lone pairs, we can determine the shape of our molecule. Please note that you only look at the central atom when you're counting lone pairs and bonds. We do not look at the lone pairs on the outside of the atom. They do not count and they're not considered in the molecular shape. If we have four bonding groups and no lone pairs, that shape is called tetrahedral. If we have three bonding groups and no lone pairs, that shape is called trigonal planar. If we have three bonding groups and one lone pair, it's called trigonal pyramidal or pyramidal. If we have two bonding groups and no lone pairs, it is a linear molecule. We have two bonding groups and one lone pair. It is bent. And if we have two bonding groups and two lone pairs, it is also bent. This is a handy table to use when determining the shape. So let's look back at the structures that we drew for our Lewis structure previously. We drew arsenic trihydride, and arsenic trihydride had a lone pair and three bonds to hydrogen atoms. If we look at this on our table, we have three bonding groups and one lone pair, and so this is trigonal pyramidal. Our methane was carbon bonded to four hydrogen. No lone pairs on our carbon. And so we have four bonding groups and no lone pairs. So this is a tetrahedral structure. Water. And oxygen bonded to two hydrogen with two lone pairs. And so this is a bent structure. See if you can complete and determine the shape of the, of the last three molecules. Pause the video and determine their shape. Our carbon dioxide was carbon double bonded to 
two separate oxygen. So we look at the carbon and just the bonds or lone pairs that are on the carbon. We don't worry about the ones on the oxygen, just the carbon. So we have two bonding groups with zero lone pairs on the carbon. And so this would be a linear molecule. Our cyanide ion was carbon, triple bonded to nitrogen, a lone pair on the carbon and a lone pair on the nitrogen. Here we only have two atoms with a triple bond in between. Because there is a triple bond, this is going to be a linear molecule. We look at our SO3. Our SO3 was sulfur bonded to three oxygen. Two of them had single bonds, and the third one had a double bond. But looking at our sulfur, it has three bonds with zero lone pairs attached to that sulfur. And so this would be trigonal planar. So why is the shape of molecules important? Well, the shape of our molecules are like a key that can fit into a lock. The lock is an enzyme, which is the large protein that exists in our body in order to carry out and catalyze chemical reactions. The molecule has to have the correct shape to fit into the enzyme in order for the reaction to happen. This works in many of our sensory organs, but one example is our olfactory system. This is where we sense smell. The molecules that carry the scent enter our nose and interact with receptor cells in our nose. When they interact and fit into those blocks, it triggers a nervous system response, which sends signals to our brains to smell a particular substance. 